Hey everyone, it's Carly Hall and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's tutorial will be an Adobe Illustrator tutorial, which I tend not to do because I know a lot of you don't have Adobe Illustrator, but this tutorial will give you the basics of how to create print then cut stickers and it will be very similar in any software that you're using. Third party software is like Inkscape, Silhouette Studio Business Edition, and Adobe Illustrator. And then we'll bring that into Cricut's design space to upload it and print it out and then cut it. So if you follow along on Instagram, I created these print and cut stickers for myself so that I can know when all of my bills are due. I do have them on auto pay, but I like to know what I'm spending on all of these things every month so I can reassess if it's worth it, if I need to cut back on some of my active subscriptions, all that good stuff. So if you want these free print and cut stickers, those are on my blog available for you. But I got a lot of questions on how I made them because people wanted to make their own. So I'm going to walk you through kind of my thought process and how I do it. There are tons of ways to do this. So this is just one of the many ways that you can do it. So I'm an illustrator. And if you don't have illustrator, you can actually um, subscribe, not even subscribe, get a free trial before you subscribe for a full week. So you can kind of play around and see if it's something that you would be interested in subscribing to. Just probably add that to my active subscriptions. <laughs> so we're going to start by saying file and we're going to open a new window. Um, sorry, we're going to start with a new project and then we're going to resize it so that it fits the print and cut parameters for Cricut. So the max area you can print on Cricut right now is 6.75 by 9.25. So we're going to create a blank artboard and an artboard is essentially a canvas where you can work on and um, put all your art and the area around it is what won't be seen. So you can actually leave your fonts in your file or you know images that you're referencing and then save just your actual artboard. So I am going to make very similar stickers to those because I got a lot of questions on how to make those exact stickers. So we're going to start by using our type tool. Now one of my secrets, which not really a huge secret, but I like to use dingbat fonts for images. I'm not an artist, I can't draw. I can digitally make artwork, but I like to use artwork that already exists. So I'm just going to type out some letters so you can see what a dingbat font looks like. So if I go into my dingbat fonts, I have a couple of them here, and you can just see that if I do herbs and spices, for example, all those different letters have different images, which think about how cute these would be for coloring sheets or different cute images like this. So say I wanted to make these into stickers, I absolutely could, or I can choose another dingbat font that I have on my computer. There's one that I'm thinking of, fun stuff. And you can see there's all these cute little icons. So depending on the type of license you have, you could um, see if you have the commercial license or if you're just using it for personal use, you can obviously make this for yourself. I wanted to show you where I get my fonts from. So for my Dingbat fonts, I usually get them from the Silhouette Design Store and just search Dingbat. And then you can see there are a ton. There's earring Dingbat fonts, there's cute little flourishes and banners. So, so many things where you're paying like this one is only $1.50 and you're getting all those images for the cost of $1.50. So you can look through and see all the different icons. This one's a cute one. I might need that one. So then you download them as a font to your computer and then they're in your actual fonts. So let's use um, this little balloon image here. So we'll delete everything else out and just use the balloons for our image we're going to work on. So let's make a sticker that is a birthday reminder. So we'll just type out happy birthday, which doesn't look like happy birthday since I don't have a typing font right now. Again, the dingbat fonts are icons instead of letters. So the font I used for the planner stickers you just saw earlier is Caramel Espresso. So I'm gonna use that one for this too. And then you can just use the text tool to do whatever you want, align it however you'd like, resize it, all of the good stuff, adjust the spacing, and you can play around. You can get so custom in, let me move this to the side, oops, so you can see. 
you can make this really as custom as you'd like. So now I have my text, my little icon. This would make a really cute tag, but we're gonna make it a sticker. And then what you'll notice on my planner stickers, let's go back over here. They all had these cloud-like bubbly offsets around them. I have an entire video on offsets that I will link to so that you can dive even deeper into designing your own images, but I'm going to kind of give you the quick and dirty on this tutorial. So right now, if I were to try to make an offset, these aren't images yet, they're still fonts. So if I go to object and then path and then offset, I don't have an offset path option. So what we need to do is convert these to paths first. So either right clicking on your mouse or two finger clicking on your key, on your trackpad, depending on the type of computer you're using, you'll wanna right click. So for me, I'm on a Mac, so I'm gonna two finger click and I'm going to say create, create outlines. I'm gonna do the same things for the balloon since that's also a font. I'm gonna create those outlines. Now one of my pro tips is to see what your Cricut will see and cut. You can on your computer or on your view, you can say view and then go to outline. On your computer, it's command Y or if you're on a PC, control Y. So I'm gonna click that view. And now if I were to cut this out of material, my Cricut would cut it and all those little letters would be individual. So they're not welded together yet, which is okay for a print and cut, but if you wanna weld them together just for the heck of it, you can open your Pathfinder window and then unite them together. So the outline view is really helpful to understand the cut paths that your machine will follow. We can come out of outline view and see our image again. So I am just going to play around and you can change these colors, you can do whatever you want. All right, so again, you can change the color of even this text if you want, so play around with everything however you'd like. So now we may need to make that cloud offset. So we're going to highlight everything by dragging our cursor over everything and then click up at the top, object, path, and offset path. Offset is one of my favorite tools. I use it more than really anything else. So again, that's why I have an entire video on it, so you can check that out. But you can play around and you can make the offset bigger or smaller depending on what you need to cover. So I'm gonna do 1.5 or 0.15, and then I'm going to click OK. Now it looks like a hot mess right now, but we're gonna use that same Pathfinder window at the bottom and we're just going to unite it over here. It'll change to whatever color it's grouped to, so you'll just wanna make sure that you are ungrouped when you change the color. So now that I'm just on this layer, I'm going to double click and change it to white, and then I'm going to arrange it and send to the back. So I could turn this into an SVG so that my Cricut can cut out all these different layers in vinyl or whatever I'd like, but since this is a printable tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make it into a printable sticker. So I'm gonna group everything together by again, just highlighting everything, or on your keyboard, you can say Command A and highlight everything and then group it together. Right click and group, or um, on your keyboard like I did, Command G. So that way when I click any area, it's all grouped together and moves as one piece. You'll wanna resize your image to whatever you want your sticker dimensions to be. So let's say we want this sticker to be 2.25 inches or you know even bigger. So you can resize them. Let's say, actually, let's make them a little bit bigger for the purposes of this tutorial. We'll do four inches. So now our image is ready to bring into the Cricut software. But before we do that, we have all of this area. So I wouldn't recommend just printing this because you'll waste a lot of material. So instead, I would recommend working in your outline view so you can see and just arranging everything so they nest together really perfectly. So you can even rotate them upside down and nest them together so that they take up less area. You could put them together really close or if you think it'll fit better this way. So you can kind of just nest them. Now, if you're like me and you're uploading this, you may as well just shrink some down and fill some of the, some of the negative space too. So you can get really creative with where all your stickers are going so that you don't waste any of your valuable sticker paper. So again, you can play around, add, add more stickers, fill in all these negative spaces, but 
you get the you get the point. You'll want to just take advantage of all that space on your artboard. So once you're happy and you make sure that none of the lines are overlapping, you will export this. So we're going to say file and then export, export as, and then we are going to choose PNG. So this is going to be the birthday stickers and we're going to use the artboard. I've conditioned myself to always use the artboard because I usually leave extra designs on the edges and I don't want to export those. So use your area around your artboard, kind of as your design space, and then you'll just put your finished designs on that artboard. And then we'll say export. You'll want to make sure that this is toggle to transparent because that's how the Cricut will know what, what to cut around. And then you'll click OK. We'll open up Cricut Design Space and we'll upload our image. So we're going to upload image, browse, and we want our birthday stickers that we just made. And you'll see that they come in with that transparent background all ready to go. I always choose complex, so we'll just choose complex and then continue on. At this step, you'll notice that the background is all transparent, so you'll just continue on. You'll want to make sure to save it as a print then cut since we are designing stickers that we will print with our printer and then cut on our Cricut machine. So you'll click save. And then you'll select that image and insert it onto your canvas. It will come in bigger than what we saved it as. So in Illustrator or whatever programming program you're using, you'll want to highlight everything and then see how wide your image is. So my image is 6.5515. So I'll just copy that dimension, bring it over here and resize my image so that it is the correct dimension that I designed it to be. So now it fits in that print and cut parameter and I can click make it. The new update of um, Design Space isn't showing that you'll have this black line around it. So I'll show you what that is by saving this as a PDF. But I will teach you how to print and use all of these different functions in my full print and cut tutorial. This is more of a design tutorial, so I'm not going to go over printing and actually cutting this. Um, so you'll want to check out my print and cut video, which will go over everything more in detail of what the heck I'm talking about. So I'm going to save it as a PDF so you can see what it will look like when you actually print it. So when you print it out, it'll have this black line around it. And that is what your Cricut will use to determine where the image is. And then it will cut around that cloud image that you designed. So that is how you design a print and cut image in Illustrator that you can upload to Cricut and easily cut. So it's really fun to make these different stickers and play around with the designs. You can customize them as much or as little as you want. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, you'll have to let me know in the comments below because I love to make more tutorials like this if this is what you want to see. So let me know in the comments or let me know other tutorials that you'd like to see. If you are a Cricut user and you're looking for more help, make sure to check out my Facebook group, Cricut Crafts with Carly Hall, and we will get you all sorted out over there. Thanks so much for joining me in this video and I will see you in the next one.